Santos was made in 1992 by Sega. It is a board-top arcade machine. Rather than a video game, it is a homage to Sega's earlier electromechanical machines, with which the company grew big. Instead towards the screen, the player is aiming into a black void, in which reflections of real physical targets appear. The gun assembly is just horizontally movable and indicates the fired shots via an infinity mirror, which is located behind the semi-transparent playfield. The Ghost Hunter's board top game predates Sega's series of amusement park rides of the same name and can be considered independent. It was sold as a toy marketed towards children aged 5 years and older. Even though the game is called Ghost Hunters, the targets are not really Spectres. In total there are 5 enemies. Frankenstein's monster, a mummy, a vampire, a werewolf and a lagoon monster. Each target consists of two stacked light tubes, which are illuminated via an LED at the bottom. The LEDs themselves rest on tall plastic stilts, which support them on the PCB. The front tube is a cute looking, detailed representation of a monster and is illuminated green. The back tubes are generic flash shapes, which light up red upon being shot. The pistol lacks back sides. Therefore the player has to aim from the hip and adjust based on the shot indication which is visible from behind the semi-transparent mirror, which shows the reflections of the monsters. The indicator consists of an LED inside an infinity mirror. When viewing from the correct angle, it looks as if a shot of light was fired into the distance. The assembly is very simple and is made of two mirrors, which are separated by a spacer. The mechanical portions of the unit are very similar to the internals of Chicago Coins Big Top Elemeca, which I have shown before in episode 204. Besides the usage of a mirror to increase the perceived distance to the targets, also the hit detection system is particularly similar. At Ghost Hunters, moving the pistol will swipe a metal bridge over a PCB. At angles which correspond to the location of monsters, this metal piece connects one of five signal pads to ground. These copper pads are protected from oxidization and friction by a layer of grease. The quality of the PCB is high. Besides the usage of adhesive tape, the design of the internals is very elegant. The pistol itself is purely mechanical. Pulling the trigger causes a finger to protrude out. When mounted in place, this finger resides over a momentary switch. The gun locks into its pedestal via two plastic clips, where it binds firmly but can be detached again quickly without hassle. It feels very sturdy and is well made. The unit is powered by 4 C cells, but I went and installed a DC barrel socket. This gave me the opportunity to measure the power consumption. At 6 volts, Ghost Hunter stores up to 0.15 Ampere, but usually idles around 0.11 Ampere. An attract mode, which plays every 10 seconds, prevents the units from being powered unintentionally. A 4 bit microprocessor is the heart of the Ghost Hunter's cabinet. Very clear sounding digital voice samples are being emitted via the substantial 0.2 watt speaker in the front. Dasuke Gori, who was contracted as the main voice actor for the game, is a respected professional and known for his distinctive deep booming voice. He voiced animes such as Dragon Ball, Gundam, Transformers, Mighty Atom, Cowboy Bebop and One Piece. Furthermore, he contributed to video game series such as Time Crisis, Tekken, Metal Gear, Star Fox and Final Fantasy. The game just consists of three rounds, which progressively get more difficult. In the first two rounds, shooting a target will yield a single point, whereas each hit will give three points in the third round. A maximum of six points can be achieved in round one and a total of 30 points in round two. By the end of round 3, the highest achievable score is 99 points. A table on the left hand side of the unit ranks the player based on the achieved score. The highest rank is Ghost Hunter and degrades over Hunter Apprentice to Octopus Hunter. At the end of the game all monsters sequentially light up and a variable voice can be heard, which differs depending on the performance. If the player surpasses 89 points, the default male narrated voice clip is changed for one of a female artist. Another. 
In order to judge the game at its best, I cleaned all contacts on the hit detection circuit and reapplied the original lubrication. In my opinion, the player has to remain stationary with the head and then memorize valid angular attack regions for each of the five enemies, as the hitboxes aren't very big and seemingly affected by the perspective of the player. With that in mind, the game plays very well and is lots of fun. Reaching 99 points is reasonably challenging and will keep players on their toes for a while. I appreciate that the monsters were mounted at various depths and not all in line. In my mind, the cabinet looks cute and appealing. I love the idea of miniature shooting games and I wished more companies built them, but sadly there are just very few. Taiga Electronics did the laser game series, an example of which I have covered in episode 176. The box is very cheerful and colorful. The five monsters are depicted in a large artwork which is reused several times. Detailed photos of the ghost hunter's cabinet allow a close look. Thorough explanations tell the customer exactly what to expect. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.